So this is the 2010 electricity paper for level 2 physics. In question 1 we're looking at static electricity. We're given the charge on an electron and the mass on an electron. And we can uh, assume that those may be required right throughout the paper, uh, most likely in this first question. The oscilloscope is an electronic instrument widely used in making electrical measurements. Its main component is the cathode ray tube. The cathode ray tube is a vacuum tube in which electrons are accelerated and deflected by electric fields. The electrons are deflected in various directions by two sets of plates placed at right angles to each other in the neck of the tube. Okay, so uh, let's just point that out. That's one plate, one set of plates, that's another set. This one looks like it moves um, backwards and forwards, um, three-dimensionally drawn that way, and this one is an up and down movement. So the beam can be directed uh, in um, a full kind of two dimensions to push the picture, um, which would be over here somewhere. The diagram below is a simplified diagram of the Y plates, which were these ones. Uh, in the cathode ray tube, these are two parallel metal plates. Okay, so, um, yep, the two parallel metal plates are separated by a distance of 3.0 millimeters. That's to two significant figures. It's not SI units. These are the things you should be noticing. So if we put that in SI units, it's 0 0.003 meters. Uh, the plates are maintained at a potential difference of 20 volts, which is uh, the SI units. A, on the diagram below, draw arrows to represent the shape and direction of the electric field. Okay, a lot of details in this. Um, uh, one, I'll, I'll just do it and talk about it as we go. So, the lines are parallel inside the plates. Now, um, I've looked at the marking schedule, so I know this is only an achieved question. So they're really only interested in the direction and the even spacing on the inside. Um, so the direction, uh, and I'll answer that then and we'll carry on with the rest. But, because you can actually tell from this question whether it's a, um, a achieved merit or even an excellence question, because there's enough detail you could look for to make this an excellence question. But anyway, um, what we do to find the direction, it's the direction of a force that would be experienced by a positive test charge. If we chucked a positive charge in there to test what happens, um, then it would move upwards away from the positive. Opposite charges repel them towards the negative since they attract. So these are the direction uh, of the arrows on here. And now, uh, so that's all that would be required for this question. However, you never know, as I said, you never know. So sometimes they look for a slight bending out at the ends um, because that's um, what happens at the end of the field. There's no more plates to maintain a uniform field. It becomes less uniform at those points. Um, and um, you could even see, uh, I'm not going to do these ones in detail, but you could even see um, field lines coming outwards evenly spaced from here as well. Okay, and all the way around because you just don't have the information. I'm doing this very roughly just to um, illustrate the point. But and then you draw arrows on them pointing towards, towards, away, away, away and so forth. You get the idea. Okay, so um, just to emphasize that the the things they often look for, there's uh, at least three of them. Even spacing um, of the lines where it's meant to be uniform, um, arrows in the right direction, bending outwards at the ends gently, and sometimes uh, sort of a fourth or those are included together as these light rays on um, lines on the outside. Okay, moving on. Took too long on that. B part one. Show that the electric field strength in the region between the plates is 6.7 times 10 to the minus 3 volts per meter. Okay, so um, one thing about this, as soon as you see the show, uh, actually two things, um, you should you should think, one, they're going to use what you have to show later, and they've, they've given you the value because um, it relies upon you uh, getting that correct to calculate something later on, so that's a possibility. Um, not always, but it's a possibility. The other one is, um, is that a show question is not about you taking this number and putting it into an equation, it's about you using other numbers to get to that. So this is only a check on your result anyway. But um, it's interesting, the volts per meter give you a clue as to what you can use, because you're after the electric field strength. There's actually two equations that you can use for electric field strength, but this one's volts per meter, so we might take the voltage over the distance. 
of separation and we were given the voltage just above there, 20 volts um, and we were given 3 millimeters which is 0 0.003 so we can put 20 as the voltage divided by 0 0.003 and that does in fact give you um, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 3 equals that. You should always put the equals, I'm just being a little bit quick here. State another unit for electric field strength uh, if you if you uh, look through the formulas, you'll find one. Or um, if you just know, um, the electric field strength is always also the force per um, charge. So if you're looking for units, you would look at newtons per coulomb. Okay, I won't labour that one. An electron is released with zero velocity from the negative plate. So Vi equals zero. Uh, from the negative plate, and it's an electron, so negatively charged means it's going to experience a force that way. Um, and as shown in the diagram below, so you describe what happens to the electron once it's released in terms of the energy changes. So initially, no velocity, so there's no kinetic energy. Um, let's write that, no EK to start with. You should write this out in a bit more full, I'm just dictating for the video um, in the short term. So no EK to start, but uh, all EP, potential energy, electric potential energy in fact you'd like to say specifically what type of potential energy because there's lots of them and then as it travels down here towards there um, you will increase in kinetic energy and decrease in potential energy and then eventually it will be all EK when it hits the opposite plate uh, and no potential energy. Okay. Two. The motion of the electron. Describe what happens to the electron once it's released in terms of the motion of the electron. Well, uh, we can say that it's accelerating. We know it's accelerating because there's a force acting on it. from uh, the force due to the electric field. You put a charge into an electric field, the charge interacts with the electric field, experiencing a force from it. Whenever Newton's, Newton's uh, second law, whenever there's an unbalanced force, you'll have acceleration. Okay, uh, I think that sort of covers it. There's only so many ways you can talk about it accelerating, starting off with zero velocity and increasing till it has a velocity, therefore it has acceleration, stuff like that if you really want, but the space is a bit limited for that question. D. Calculate the velocity with which the electron reaches the positive plate after travelling the distance of 3 millimetres. Goody. Okay. Questions like this um, can be difficult because they involve a little bit of mechanics linked with the electricity. Um, the best way to consider questions like this is to consider energy, especially since they've kind of led you through the energy initially. Um, and you're also probably going to have to consider forces, but we, we won't worry about that too much just yet. I'll, I'll, write, I'll write it down. Energy forces. We'll start with energy. We've seen that the energy goes from potential energy um, to kinetic energy. Um, potential energy doesn't have no velocity, doesn't have velocity related to it, but kinetic energy does have velocity. Remember the formula is uh, half mv squared. Um, the potential energy, okay, is um, the the electric field strength, oops, times by. Oh wait, no, I've, I've I've mixed myself up. Okay, this is where we get into the force. But energy is the work done by the field um, to accelerate it up to that that speed when it's at three uh, millimeters uh, of distance passing through. Anyway, so the uh, one way to look at um, the potential energy is to look at the work, which is the force times the distance. Okay, and because um, work is the amount of energy converted, that's what we're trying to say here. With gravitational, no, I won't, I won't get into that. I'm so bad for side tracks. But anyway, um, what we will know is that that work done is going to be equal to the kinetic energy once it reaches the other plate. Because um, yeah, you, you do a certain amount of work on it, as soon as you stop doing work, all that energy you used while doing the work, or um, that the work was converting, is converted into another form of energy, which in this case is um, uh, the kinetic energy. There we go. And that's got the velocity factor in it. Now, 
Um, we know the distance, which is 3 millimetres. Um, we were given the mass at the very, very start of the question, the mass of an electron. Um, velocity is what we're trying to find out. Force, that's the trick. Now, we do know um, the electric field strength, and I'm writing it with this funny E to distinguish it from the energy E. Um, electric field strength, remember the, the alternate units were newtons per coulomb. That came from the uh, electric field strength being force per unit to charge. So in this case we have the electric field strength because we calculated that earlier. Remember that was the show question. We have Q because it's the charge on an electron because it's one electron uh, that's, that's accelerating. So we can rearrange this making F equal electric field strength times the charge. In fact we could write that charge as E because it's the charge on an electron. Um, and now we've got a full equation with bits that we know everything about to find the velocity. So let's write that full equation. So it's going to be um, electric field strength times the charge on an electron times the distance, because that, that first part is F, remember, force times distance is the work, equals half mv squared. We're after the velocity. So uh, let's rearrange that for velocity squared. V squared equals 2 electric field strength, charge on an electron, D, divided by M. And then all that remains is to square root the whole lot and get rid of that square. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging those numbers in. Electric field strength from earlier, charge on an electron from the very top of the question, D is the distance 3 millimetres, and SI units 0 0.003 metres, and the mass on the electron was also given early on. And when you plug all of that in, and calculate for your velocity, you'll find that you get uh, 2.67 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, which is pretty fast. Um, still a long way off the speed of light, but it's very, very fast. Okay, and that's that question.